Hi guys, good evening to everybody. I wish you a very happy new year to all. So I am alone on teaching zoology for Axie.com online. So last class I started the health and diseases, something related to microbiology. So what are the different factors responsible for maintaining a normal healthy life? So we have just discussed also the three different types of dimensions, physical dimensions, mental dimensions and also social dimensions and also the various factors that affect health something about the balanced diet regular exercise personal hygiene and so on some other factors about uh, the various aspects of diseases awareness etc now let's proceed further i would like to give something about how is health affected so health is normally mainly affected by three main factors it may be because of number one genetic disorders some changes in the genetic material what you have in the chromosome or the genes the one which controls the various activities the one which is responsible for transferring the characters from one individual to another and also most of the diseases you know caused by infections either by bacteria or by virus or any other microorganisms that's a second fact and number three while you are changing your lifestyle, for example smoking or for example drinking, so all these lifestyle changes also one of the causative factors causing diseases like for example the heart disorders and also the dry disorders. So these are all the three main factors responsible for just affecting your health either because of genetic disorders or because of actually infections caused by different microorganisms and macroorganisms. And also because of changing your lifestyle, one of the factors nowadays, the one of the evil factors at present in the society, responsible for just causing the disorders. We'll see one by one, in what way these are all responsible for causing disease. And before that, normally in an individual, a disease develops by two ways. And some of the diseases we can say acute disease. For example, in a person is meeting an accident, loss of blood leads to renal failure. And even for example common cold, you are getting common cold because of winter season or some other smoke. That may result actually that is lasting only for few days. So any disease which is of sudden onset and is of shorter in duration is called as an acute disease. Acute renal failure because of an accident, a common cold all of a sudden you are getting diarrhea because of food poisoning. So these are all acute actual disorders, all of a sudden they occur and ultimately they will be cured because of treatment. So they are normally lasting only for shorter duration. Here I, I have given my example the common cold, diarrhea also, acute renal failure. So these are all some of the disorders caused because of uh, actually some accident or some infections of shorter duration. Then chronic disease, chronology, the study of time. For knowledge means the study of time. So any disease which occurs progressively and lasting for longer duration is considered as a chronic disease. It's considered as a chronic disease. For example, diabetes mellitus. It is because of metabolic disorder. Once it happens to occur in your body, it is everlasting till death. It can be controlled but it cannot be cured. Likewise, any heart disease an example of a heart attack or a person having hypertension. So these diseases can be normally controlled but cannot be cured. So they are lasting forever, longer duration, even age also. And the elephantiasis, the one which is caused because of the filarial bone, the person having elephantiasis, the swollen legs and swollen arms because of the infection by a parasitic bone, also lasting forever, it cannot be cured. So any disease which is occurring progressively, and is of longer duration is called what is known as chronic disease lasting forever so this is actually some type of classification generally speaking but all together we can just classify the diseases based on the causative agents the causative actually the matter what are the agents or what are the factors responsible for causing diseases accordingly we can have two headings we can have two different types of diseases one non-communicable and non-infectious those 
diseases which cannot be spread. For example, we have marasmus or vitamin deficiency, very very, or night blindness or xerophthalmia. So these are all deficiency diseases. Or for example, some diseases because of genetic changes in the body leading to Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, some genetic disorders. Or because of, for example, metabolic accident diseases. Say an example of diabetes mellitus. So, those diseases which cannot be spread from one individual to another are called non-infectious diseases, non-communicable diseases, or even they are also called as non-contagious diseases. But some other diseases, for example, if you have cholera in one area, or if you have typhoid in one area, it is being spread one individual to another, or amoebiosis, a kind of amoebic descent. They are being spread and they are being transmitted from one individual to another by way of transferring the parasites from one individual to another through agents like water or food or even for example the insects or any other animals. So those diseases which can be spread from one organism to another are considered as communicable diseases or infectious diseases or contagious diseases. So almost all contagious diseases are caused by microorganisms along with some worms. Some worms also cause such disorders, for example, the helminthic worms. So anyway, those which are transmitted and those which are not transmitted, so based on these two categories, we can have two different groups of diseases. One communicable, another one non-communicable. So the non-communicable diseases are grouped under three headings. It may be because of organic or metabolic disorders, metabolic disorders. For example, you have diabetes mellitus, a diabetic patient, so unable to convert glucose, this is because of uh, the deficiency of insulin hormone. And hereditary, some disorders, for example, sickle cell anemia or thalassemia or any other disorder. So all being transmitted from just actually genetic means, not by means of what is called the agents from one individual to another because of changes in the genes or in the chromosome structure or in the chromosome number. The third one, nutritional deficiency. Because of deficiency of a particular nutrient in the diet, for example, vitamin deficiency, this is very, very, then we have, I mentioned, xylopolmia, and also we have rickets or osteomalacia. So these are some of the disorders because of what is called nutritional deficiency like vitamins. Also, we have some nutritional deficiency disorders caused by proteins, for example, Kosciak, Marasmus. So, anyway, non communicable diseases are grouped under three headings one, organic or metabolic diseases, number two, hereditary or genetic diseases, and the third type we have nutritional deficiency diseases because of a deficiency of certain nutrients in the diet. Then, the infectious diseases, these are all caused because of either bacteria or virus, or fungus, or protozoan, or because of the macroorganism, the worms, say an example of tape worm, or round worm, or filarial worm. So they may also cause this. So anyway, we are grouping the communicable diseases and the five headings, protozoan, bacterium, viral, fungal, and also helminthic diseases. Now we'll see one by one just how all these diseases are transmitted and what are the examples for that. So let us start with non-communicable or non-infectious or non-contagious diseases. I mentioned already. So all those diseases are caused because of malfunctions of the body. The body is not functioning properly. In such cases we have particularly in the organisms because of uh, one particular organism not functioning properly due to some disorders that is called the malfunction of that organ. So it totally affects the whole body. So anyway, Non-communicable or non-infectious diseases are caused due to the malfunctions of the body, particularly the various organs together. Then it may be, I mentioned already, due to metabolic disorders or because of genetic disorders or because of nutritional deficiency. So the three main causes for the development of such non-communicable diseases are number one, metabolic disorders. They may be called as organic diseases. Number two, genetic disorders. They may be called as hereditary diseases. Number three, nutritional deficiency diseases. So let's see one by one what are the different kinds of such disorders under each category.
Now the organic or metabolic diseases. So we have a number of organic and metabolic diseases or metabolic diseases. And which will take number one diabetes. Because it is the one affecting almost all the people in India. The number has been increasing steadily. Even the D1 child has this what is called diabetes mellitus even after birth. So it is very common also nowadays it is normally it is very common in the case of older people now it has been actually calculated, estimated even the younger generations have this disorder. So we have to focus more attention on this one. Each and everyone must know something about or awareness about this diabetes mellitus. Now normally after a meal the carbohydrate has been broken into the smaller units what are called the glucose. The glucose being transported from the intestine to each and every cell where they are being converted into particularly the liver and muscle cells into the storage form of sugar what is called glycogen. So any sugar which is in excess after that is a meal has been transported to liver and also to the muscle where it is being converted into a complex sugar a polysaccharide namely the glycogen liver as well as muscle glycogen. So if you are taking actually a normal sugar level during fasting, just actually if you are not taking time, the normal sugar level at fasting, at fasting is about 70 to 110 milligram per 100 ml. 70 to 110 milligram per 100 ml. This is a normal fasting sugar. So it must be maintained even after just various activities. Even various activities, just like for example during physical exercise or even simplicity, etc. This is what is happening. It should be maintained. And after the meal, the glucose level reaches 150. And, and after that one, it has been converted and stored. Sometimes what will happen even after the meal, the glucose cannot be converted, it is being maintained in the blood as such. Then it is called hyperglycemia. Higher sugar level in the blood is called hyperglycemia. So the surplus glucose normally, the excess glucose or surplus glucose normally excreted along with the urine. The surplus unused glucose is excreted along with the urine. This is because of the deficiency of one hormone in insulin. So in the pancreas we have patches of cells, what are called islets of Lagerhans. And these patches of cells, the pancreas, or endograde in nature secreting two hormones, one is insulin and then glucagon. There are two types of cells in that one. One is alpha cell, another one beta cells. The beta cells of islet sub Langerhorn secrete the hormone insulin. So the insulin hormone is secreted by the beta cells. Its main function is actually promoting the conversion of glucose to form glycogen to be stored in the liver. And also it increases the oxidation of glucose in the tissues. It also just actually make the cells to uptake the glucose from the blood. But when this insulin hormone is absent, the blood sugar has not been taken up by the cells. It is being retained in just the blood. So now the blood sugar level increases. A rise in blood sugar level that is called hyperglycemia. Increase in blood sugar is called hyperglycemia. So the excess of unused glucose is excreted or expelled along with urine. And that disorder is called diabetes mellitus. Urine with the sugar. So diabetes means chronic excretion of large volume of urine. Mellitus means honey or sugar. So urine with the sugar. That is the meaning for that one. So expulsion of excess and used glucose in urine due to the deficiency of insulin hormone is called diabetes mellitus. So for proper maintenance of sugar level in the blood we need this hormone badly. So nowadays this hormone has also been produced by means of recombinant DNA technology. So the insulin hormone secreted by means of recombinant DNA technology is called humulin, human insulin hormone, humulin. Is the hormone synthesized by means of all DNA technology is called humulin. So we are producing large amount of this humulin by means of this technology because the number has been increasing steadily, the number of patients suffering from this disorder.
Now the second one, diabetes insipidus. So normally we can have three important symptoms in the case of diabetes actually mellitus. One, polyuria. This is one of the symptoms of diabetes mellitus. Then polydipsia. Polydipsia. Then polyphagia. Polyphagia. These are the three main symptoms of diabetes mellitus. Polyuria means excretion of large volume. So as a result, the person feels thirst. So he consumes large amount of water. That process is called polydipsia. Consumption of large volume of water. Then polyphagia. He feels hungry. The appetite increases. So he consumes actually excessively. That is called polyphagia. These are all the three main symptoms of diabetes mellitus. Now, the same word now I am using is diabetes insipidus. There is also a nickname for this diabetes insipidus. It is called tasteless food. In diabetes mellitus, there is a sugar excretion. But here there is no elimination of sugar. But large amount of water is eliminated. So, what is diabetes insipidus? Excretion of large volume of food. So, this is what we have called you. Yeah. So the person actually just feels thirst, consuming more water. But there is no excessive eating in the case of polyps sorry, diabetes insipidus. So in the case of diabetes mellitus, the person just excretes urine, large jump, feels thirst, so consumes more water and also consumes more food. But in the case of diabetes insipidus, there is one of the difference. There is no sugar in the urine. The person is also not eating excessively, unlike uh, diabetes in the So, here is simply excretion of large volume of diluted fluid. Due to the absence of one hormone, what is called ADH. So, ADH hormone, also another name for this one, vasopressin. This is another name for this hormone, vasopressin. This hormone is secreted by posterior lobe of PT. We will be studying later under chemical coordination after finishing this one. We will get more about this one. Vasopressin, a hormone secreted by the posterior lobe of PT. Its main function is to stimulate the kidney tissues of nephron to reabsorb more and more water. Now, we have just actually how to know the meaning for diuresis and antidiuresis. Now, this hormone is responsible for antidiuresis, hence called antidiuretic hormone. Then, what do you mean by diuresis? Diuresis means elimination of diluted urine. That is called diuresis. Elimination of large volume of urine. That is dilute. Then, antidiuresis, the elimination of concentrated scanty urine. Urine with less amount of water. But that is why it is more concentrated, small amount. So, as this hormone is actually preventing diuresis process, that is actually the elimination of this diuresis process, elimination of diluted urine. As it prevents actually the formation of diluted urine, more water being lost, it is called anti-diuretic hormone, preventing the process of diuresis, elimination of diluted So once this hormone is absent, ultimately a person is excreting large volume of urine. That is why it is called diabetes in the two major symptoms are elimination of large volume of urine so that the person feels thirst to compensate the water loss consuming more water. So that is the main difference between diabetes mellitus and diabetes insipidus. Now renal failure. So normally the kidney consists of units what are called nephrons, about a million nephrons for an each kidney. About a million nephrons for an each kidney. And these are all the structural and functional units of the kidney. Their main function is to filter the waste products from the blood and excrete them in urine. But sometimes they fail. They are unable to filter the waste products because of certain metabolic conditions, even in the case of diabetes mellitus. So the functions of the kidney span is still. So, as a result, what will happen? The reduction of the ability of the kidney span. They are unable to just filter the waste products from the blood and excrete them in urine. This inability of the kidney to filter the waste products from the blood 
and excrete them in urine is called what is known as renal failure. That is why given here the reduction of the ability of the kidneys to filter waste products from the blood and excrete them in urine, that process is called renal failure. It may be actually of acute renal failure all of a sudden happens or it may be of just what is called chronic renal failure. Acute renal failure, I mentioned only because of accident that can be cured. But chronic renal failure cannot be cured because of so many reasons. I will be studying more about later. So in such cases, a person needs a dialysis. Dialysis is being done in the case of people who are having this acute, sorry, uh, chronic renal failure. One of the alternate methods. Or also we have, for example, kidney transplantation. So the renal failure actually affects salt water balance then also just affect what is called the excretion of waste products so that the waste products accumulate in the body all these things happening because of the renal failure ultimately the person dies because of more accumulation of urea in the blood now hypertension so it is also another one of the common process nowadays you know that when we have the heart failure or the heart attack then diabetes mellitus then what is called the stroke and finally the hypertension all related to one another. Now what is hypertension? So if you are taking the normal blood pressure of a person, it is about 120 bar 80 millimeter. 120 refers to a systolic pressure and 80 refers to a diastolic pressure. So normally during the cardiac cycle, the heart undergoes two stages or two phases. One is the contraction Another one, the relaxation phase. So the contraction phase is also called as a And the relaxation phase is called diastole. So during contraction, as the heart is pumping the blood with the force, the blood is sent out with the great force. And so that it exerts a pressure or a force or tension on the wall of the blood vessels while flowing through it. So when the blood is flowing through the blood vessels, because of the contraction of the heart, it exerts a tension on the wall of the blood vessel. The tension or a force that is created on the wall of the blood vessels by the blood while it is forcing through it is called what is known as BP or blood pressure. So normally the BP is always high during the contraction stage of systole. That is why you see that one 130 millimeter mercury. But during the returning of that blood from the various parts of the body, there is no such pumping mechanism. So we have the pressure is less during the relaxation of the heart. The blood is returning to the heart from various parts of the body. Then there is no pumping action. So that the blood pressure has down. So that is 80 millimeter mercury during diastole or the relaxation of the heart. So in a normal person, we are expressing the BP, the BP. The numerator as systolic pressure and the denominator as the, what is called the diastolic pressure. That is why we express 120 or 80 as a normal blood pressure in terms of millimeter mercury. Sometimes the blood pressure may rise. So there is actually that abnormally high blood pressure is called what is known as hypertension. So for example, in the hypertension, the BP may 130 or 90 or even above this reach. So a BP has gone up and that increased BP or high BP is called what is known as hypertension or high blood pressure. So what will happen actually? In the case of hypertension, the systolic pressure is equal to uh, more than 160 millimeter mercury. 160 millimeter mercury. And the diastolic pressure is equal to uh, more than just 95 millimeter. So in both the cases, we have just normally high blood pressure occurs more than the normal level of 120 or 80. Even some cases abnormally low blood pressure occurs, then it is called hypertension. It is very common in the case of pregnant ladies. We have hypertension, that is decreased blood pressure. So normal blood pressure is 120 by 80. When it is being increased, then it is called hypertension. It leads to a number of disorders, prime hemorrhage. Then also sudden death of the individual causing actually breakage in the blood vessels of uh, the heart, etc. These are all happening because of the effect of hypertension. So this is caused because of actually, because of uh, changing lifestyle, because of high content of cholesterol or smoking or drinking, all are interrelated with this hypertension.
Now the next one, coronary artery disease. Simply what we call this one CA. Sometimes in the body mean by a coronary artery. The blood vessel which supplies blood to the wall of the heart is called coronary artery. So we have left coronary artery and right coronary artery. The left being normally for the divided left and descending and also left anterior descending LAD, LAD artery, the left circumferent artery. So LCS like that we have. So the blood vessel which supply which supply blood to the wall of the heart collected calls a coronary blood vessels. We have different types of coronary blood vessels. Sometimes what will happen damage occurs to the coronary blood vessel, the one which supplies blood to the heart. Or sometimes we have the narrowing of such coronary arteries due to the deposition of fat. So either damage or narrowing of the coronary arteries normally resulted in a number of diseases collectively known as CAD. It may be for example heart attack or angina pectoris, myocardial infarction, we have late one by one activity. So all these disorders related to the heart are simply called as coronary artery diseases, myocardial infarction heart attack or just we have angina pectoris etc. So this is because of the narrowing or just a blockage or even damage at the coronary arteries due to deposit of fats etc. Now stroke. So it is a cerebrovascular disease. A cerebrovascular disease. Meaning for that one, it is concerned with the blood vessels of the brain. That's why it's called cerebrovascular disease. Sometimes what will happen, so I mentioned coronary artery, there you have the blockage. So the blockage in the coronary artery results in what is called coronary thrombosis. Blockage because of a clot, abnormal clot which blocks the heart vessel. Then it is called coronary thrombosis leading to heart attack. Likewise, you know that when sometimes we have a person, a patient leading to coma stage. This is because of a bleeding in the blood vessels of brain or blockage in the brain vessels leading to coma condition, unconscious state. So a blockage in what is called the brain vessel or cerebral vessel is called cerebral thrombosis or called stroke. Thrombosis, thrombosis means what is the meaning for that one. So we have clot is formed outside the blood vessel. Suppose you are meeting an injury, the rupture of the blood vessel occurs at the point of injury or at the opening or the puncture of the blood vessel, now the liquid blood is converted into a solid mass, this is called what is known as a clot, which blocks the opening so that there is no further loss of blood. This is normally happening in the case of normal defense mechanism, that process called clotting or coagulation process. Sometimes what will happen, clotting also occurs inside the blood vessel. This is inside clot. If clot is formed inside the blood vessel, that is called intravascular clot or also called thrombus. The clot formed inside the blood vessel is called thrombus. Now this thrombus actually is attached to the wall. The process of formation of thrombus is called thrombosis. So if thrombus is formed in the brain vessel, then it is called cerebral thrombosis. It is otherwise called a stroke. Leading to unconscious state. So you cannot remove this clot easily, unlike the clot in the heart. It can be just done by means of angio, you know that one angioplasty by means of surgery. But you cannot do it easily in the case of brain. So the brain is highly sensitive, you know that one. So the stroke is nothing but actually a cerebral thrombosis, nothing but a clot in the cerebral vessel or brain vessel. And it is because of occlusion, otherwise called as blockage in the cerebral artery. So blockage in the cerebral artery results in stroke. So we have ultimately the coma street. The person is unable to do or look after his various activities. Then Alzheimer's disease. So this is also related to the brain. Stroke is also related to the brain, but this is because of a clot in the blood vessel that is always called a cerebrovascular disease. And we have Alzheimer's disease. It's otherwise called chronic brain syndrome under the name of the Dr. Alzheimer, the German Dr. Alzheimer normally just has given the name Alzheimer's disease and the name is given under the name of the doctor. 
Then what is the meaning of that one? After a certain age, for example, the case of old people, beyond age, they are unable to just actually perceive any stimulus from external sources. And also they cannot recognize some of the things from what happened in the past. That means there is a progressive loss of memory. In the case of old people beyond 80, progressive loss of memory. So that is one of the symptoms of this one, progressive loss of memory. And also, and that one is followed by general loss of perceptive function. The brain is unable to receive any information from the external environment. That is why the person cannot recognize anybody standing in front. Is that person cannot be able to recognize. So it is characterized by progressive loss of memory and also general loss of perceptive function, the receptive function or the receiving function. So it is normally affecting the people beyond the age of 80. So people beyond 80 are almost, say, we can say 50% of the people beyond the age of 80 can be affected. And between the age group of 65 to 74, only 5 percent of the people are affected. This disease occasionally affects or rarely affects the people between the age or below the age group of 50. So people below 50 cannot be affected, generally speaking. And what is the reason for the one? Some sort of damage to the cerebral. So atrophy of cerebral cortex. Atrophy means diminishing in structure. This is because of the degeneration of the nervous tissues while the person is attaining old age. There is a degeneration of the nervous tissue, ultimately a layer will form and the person is unable to perceive any information from the external source. That is why I mentioned progressive loss of memory and also loss of perceptive function. Even one genetic disorder is attributed or related to Alzheimer's disease. There is one syndrome what is called Down syndrome. Down syndrome. This is a genetic disorder in the case of such people they have 47 chromosomes. You know that one we have only 46. But in the case of Down syndrome people have 47 chromosomes, one extra chromosome is formed. So it may be one of the factors for causing Alzheimer's disease, one of the factors, genetic factors. But it's mainly you see that one because of the generation of the nervous tissues due to old age. Beyond 80, almost 50% of the people are affected. Now obesity. So we are ultimately using the word very often you know that one obese persons. What is an obese person? So some persons are fat in them. This is because of the storage of excess of fat in the body. So obesity is nothing but the storage of excess of fat in the body. And as a result you see that one we have a number of impurities in the body. So it results in a significant impairment of health from a variety of diseases. Once a person is fat enough, he ultimately has developed a number of disorders, for example, diabetes mellitus. Then we have also the heart disease, heart attack, atherosclerotic heart disease, hypertension, all are developing because of that, what is called the fat nature. So the excess of storage of body fat resulting in significant impairment of health from a variety of diseases is all what is called as obesity. So actually, it can be corrected by means of balance diet. So it is because of genetic factors inherited from the parents or because of eating excessively or because of for example just some other factors like not doing physical exercises and also it is because of hormonal factors. One hormone, somatotropic hormone, estrogen -like hormone is increasing more and more. So because of over secretion of one growth hormone is also one of the factors. So it may be because of genetic factors, it may be because of eating excessively or it may be because of hormonal factors due to over secretion of hormone like somatotropic hormone from anterior pituitary. Now, how can we just calculate whether the person is obese or not? So the degree of obesity can be assessed by means of one, just actually method what is called body mass index, body mass index, PMI. How can you calculate? So this body mass index can be calculated by taking the weight of the body and also the corresponding height of that individual. So here I have given the formula body mass index is equal to weight in kilogram. Suppose for example a person is having 70 kg body weight, 
and having a height of 180 centimeter. So, weight in kilogram just actually 70 and divided by square of height in meters that is 1.8 square, 1.8 square meter. So then in such a person you can have for example the body mass index is equal to 21.6 like that. So by taking the weight of the body and taking the square of height in meters, so we are calculating the height in centimeters, it can be converted to meter and then you have to take it square. Then you will get body mass index. But what is a normal body mass index? Just actually a normal BMI range for adult at the age of 25 is about 90. So any person, either woman or man, just above this age of 25 is considered to be obese. So there is a correlation between the weight of the people. So it is not uniform for all the age group people. So there is a correlation between the age and the weight. So you can calculate accordingly. So we have the normal BMA range in the case of adult is about 90 to 25. If it is beyond this limit, any person of either woman or man are said to be obese. Now what are the other metabolic disorders? So only few just are given in the syllabus. We have to know the names of other diseases because of uh, metabolic disorders or organic disorders or diseases. Arthritis. So arthritis actually the inflammation of the joints. It is also very common in the case of people, old age people. It may be because of metabolic disorder or because of aging process, or because of autoimmune disease, or because of infections by bacteria, or worms, or even viruses. So the inflammation of the joint, some persons are unable to flex their knee, and that is also called arthritis. Then myocardial infarction, it is one type of CA, I mentioned already. So sometimes what will happen, so this is actually, suppose you are taking the heart, one blood vessel, I am taking coronary artery, I mentioned earlier. So if it is being blocked, a particular small coronary artery being blocked, so that there is no supply of blood to this part of the heart. And as a result, this part is not receiving blood. So a localized death of the tissue of the heart muscle, leading to the non-functioning of the heart, that is called myocardial. So infarction means actually localized death. It may be even myocardial infarction as it happens in the muscle of the heart. That is why it's called myocardial infarction. Because of the non-supply of blood, so localized is death of the tissue. Sudden death of the tissue occurs in the heart muscle. That is called myocardial infarction, one of the heart disorder. Then angina pectoris, it is also related to the heart disorder due to the non-supply or deficient supply of oxygen to the heart. So when there is a demand for oxygen is increasing to the heart by doing physical exercises or any other stress, the heart has to be supplied with more oxygen. If there is any deficiency of oxygen, then we have angina pectoris. So pectoris, it refers to the chest pain, angina, a constrictive pain, chest pain. So it refers to the chest pain, a constrictive, strangling, skewing chest pain, a gurney that results in intolerable chest pain. And that is angina pectoris. This is non supply of oxygen, oxygenated blood, or just a deficient supply of oxygen through blood to the heart. Then the next one, atherosclerosis. This is nothing but hardening of blood vessels due to the deposition of cholesterol or any other fatty matrix. Hardening of the blood vessels due to the deposition of cholesterol. Then, gigantism. This is a hormonal disorder because of the over secretion of the hormone ST. And a dwarfism. When you have less secretion of this STH, the person is leading here, what is called they are attaining a dwarf stage. This is because of the non secretion or deficient secretion of that is growth hormone STH. It is a growth hormone. If it is secreted more than the normal level, then we have dietism. If it is secreted actually less than the normal level, then we have dwarfism. Then, other hormonal disorders, all these things actually got a underlying or hormonal disorders. Simple goiter, this is because of deficiency of one hormone thyroxine due to deficient of iodine in the diet. Enlargement of the thyroid gland. Cretinism, short stage of the body, short stage of the body. 
This is because of actual deficiency of thyroxine hormone at the time of birth. Vexedema is very common in the case of adult because of less secretion of thyroxine hormone. So normally they are attaining what is called some sort of symptoms in the face. Puffy, bloated face. Then Graves' disease, this is because of over secretion of the thyroxine hormone. So simple goiter, cretinism and mexedema because of less secretion of thyroxine hormone. Graves' disease, this is because of over secretion of thyroxine hormone. Then tretinoin, this is another disorder, this is caused because of deficiency of one hormone by name parathormone. Parathormone secreted by the parathyroid. Then retinopathy, this is a disorder of the eye. Retinopathy. So the damage to the retina because of either hypertension or because of diabetes, what will happen? The blood vessels just in the retina or the sensitive cells, the receptor cells are being damaged. That condition, the disease of the retina of the eye is called retinopathy. This is because of either hypertension or because of diabetes. Now, so far we have studied the different types of the what is called the metabolic disorders or organic disorders or the organic diseases. Now let's pass on to hereditary diseases or genetic disorders. So sometimes what will happen, there is a change in the composition of the gene. So if you are taking a chromosome, in the chromosome we have beads. Just like a beads in a string. And each one is called as a gene. The gene is the hereditary unit. Sometimes what will happen, a change in the composition of the gene occurs. The gene is normally made up of DNA, nucleic acid. Sometimes there is a change in the DNA molecule occurs. The change occurs because of sudden change and that sudden change is called mutation. All of a sudden, for example, when a person is exposed to radiation or any other chemical mutagens or any other just material, sometimes a change in the chemical nature of the gene occurs namely DNA and that is called mutation. That resulted in the development of genetic disorders. So one of the reasons for the development of genetic disorders, the change in the composition of the gene because of mutation and it also because actually the change may be of different types some cases it may be because of recessive autosomal gene disorder recessive autosomal gene disorder so you have studied for example in genetics tall plant versus dwarf plant so any character which is not being expressed in the F1 generation is called as a recessive character the gene responsible for that character is called a recessive gene. So, here the genetic disorders may be recessive gene located in the autosomes. So, you know that one we have 46 chromosomes. Out of 46, 44 chromosomes are called autosomes. The remaining two chromosomes are sex chromosomes. In female, we have two X chromosomes. In male, one X and one Y chromosome. So, a particular gene in one of the 44 autosomes undergo mutation, undergoes mutation, so that it becomes a recessive gene that causes the disease. So, a disease caused by recessive autosomal gene. Sometimes a defective dominant gene, a gene is there, a dominant gene, but because of some change in the chemical composition of the gene, so it becomes defective that causes a disorder. Then it is called defective autosomal, sorry. The dominant autosomal gene disorder. Effective dominant autosomal gene disorder. So, this is a second type. Sometimes a disease may also be caused by certain genes located in the sex chromosomes. And such a disorder is particularly caused by a recessive gene. Then it is called recessive just sex linked gene disorder. So, the gene may be localized in the autosome in the form of a recessive gene and causes a disease. It also be localized in the same autosome or different autosomes, but dominant, but with a change. That is called defective dominant autosomal gene disorder. Or sometimes a gene, a recessive gene present in either X chromosome or Y chromosome may cause the disease. Then it is called recessive sex linked gene disorder because the genes are linked to the sex chromosome. This is one cause. So one reason because of mutation, either in the dominant gene of autosome or recessive gene of autosomes. Or recessive gene in the sex linked chromosome. Sometimes what will happen, there are also chromosomal abnormalities. So, what do you mean by chromosomal abnormalities? 
So we have 46 chromosomes. There may be change in the number of chromosomes. One chromosome may be added or two chromosomes may be added or one chromosome may be deleted. So in such cases there is a change in the number. Either addition of one chromosome or deletion of one chromosome. Or sometimes there is a change in the structure of chromosome. Suppose this is a chromosome. Sometimes a part may be deleted. Uh, sometimes a part being added. So, either change in the structure of chromosome or change in the number of chromosomes may also cause diseases. Such abnormalities are because of chromosomes, hence called chromosomal abnormalities. Change in structure of the chromosome or change in number of chromosomes together called chromosomal abnormalities may also one of the reasons for the development of diseases. Now let's take some of a few, not many. Disease is caused by recessive autosomes or recessive genes in autosomes. I mean, so, disease is caused by recessive genes in autosomes. So, number one recessive autosomal gene disorder and which albinism. So, what do you mean by albinism? Just we have the picture. You see the person he is an albino. So, it is a recessive autosomal gene disorder. It is a recessive autosomal gene disorder. So it is an inherited disorder of melanin metabolism. Inherited disorder of melanin metabolism. You know the human skin color or coloration is because of the pigment melanin. When this pigment is not properly produced, the person turns white in color. Then it is called albinism. So melanin is responsible for human skin coloration. The production of melanin pigmentation is or melanin pigment is under the control of the gene. The dominant gene in autosome produces the melanin. When the same gene is present in recessive form, there is no production of melanin. That's why I said it is an inborn error of melanin metabolism. Inborn error means right from the birth. There is an error in the production of the melanin pigment. That is why the person becomes actually an albino. So, what are the symptoms? You see that one milk white color skin. Milk white color skin. This is because of the absence of melanin pigment in the skin, in the hands, and also just to be how in the eye region. The iris region also turns white. Milky white color skin, absence of melanin pigment in skin, hands, and eyes. And you see that one the person. Close or closes his eyes partially. The reason for that one is unable to see the bright. So there is a marked photophobia. That is one of the symptoms. A marked photophobia. See that one. Photophobia. High sensitive to light. He cannot see the bright light directly. That's why he's closing his eyes. That is called photophobia. Disliking. That is why he closes his eyes partially. Such persons cannot just open their eyes fully, cannot see the bright light. So that is about diabetes. Now, just this is only one. You have to know something about diabetes. And uh, some other disorders, just you have to know. I let you know all these six. We will be studying more about in 12th standard. Sickle cell anemia. It is a recessive gene disorder, autosomal recessive gene. So because of the presence of this one, normally you know that when the RBs is red blood cells in human are circular by concave. And once the person is affected by this disorder, the RBC becomes sickle shaped under low oxygen touch. It is being elongated sickle shaped, just like a sickle knife used for harvesting. The symbol of communist party. So that one, you know, sickle cell anemia. Anemia means you know that one. So decreased amount of hemoglobin or decreased number of RBCs. As a result, the person has developed pale skin, etc. Here the person dies because of sickle cell anemia. Caused by recessive when present together, two genes. Then it causes death. Then it's a kind of hemolytic anemia. Causes the destruction of RBCs. The thalassemia, this is another type of anemia. Here actually what will happen again the recessive gene and that gene normally causes damage too. There are two types of thalassemia in the study later alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia and both are caused because of the mutation and defective genes. Then A gamma globulinemia. 
see your immune power is present of antibody in the brain. The antibodies are chemically called as immunoglobulins. One type of immunoglobulin, the very common type of immunoglobulin, gamma globulin. There are five types, alpha, just beta, IgE, just actually, sorry, we have different types of immunoglobulin, that is A, B, E, M and G. G for gamma, M for mu, E for epsilon, D for delta, A for alpha. So, this gamma immunoglobulin is the most common type and that is giving immunity power to our body. That is nothing but an antibody. So, in the case of A gamma globulin, a failure in the synthesis of antibody, namely immunoglobulin, that causes a person not to be resistant against the disease. Then, C, or bubble voice syndrome, severe combined immunodeficiency. It is one of the immune system deficiency disorder. That's why it's called severe combined immunodeficiency. Here, because of the absence of one particular gene, there is no formation of one enzyme, ADA enzyme. And this enzyme is actually, when, when uh, absent, then there is no proliferation of the lymphocytes because of the absence of particular enzyme and the one. We do not work. We do not worry about it. So, it is because of the low number of circulating lymphocytes responsible for the production of antibodies. So that the person is highly susceptible, easily acquiring the disease for any infection. It cannot be exposed to even just a person or any just a simple antigen. So he develops a disorder. And the affected person, actually the first boy developed, actually the first individual acquired this disease was nothing but a boy. And he was kept in a bubble. Bubble is nothing but a steroid incubator. Medicine in hospitals, you are keeping the children, the newborn infants, in an incubator. Many children actually kept in an incubator. But in the case of bubble, it's a small incubator, you can keep only one man, just a child or infant at a time. That's why it's called bubble boy syndrome. The first developed syndrome in a boy was kept in a bubble, nothing but a small incubator, keeping, a, keeping an individual only one at a time. Then phenylketone urea, this is another one. In the case of this one, what we have, something happens to the metabolism of one amino acid, phenyl amino that is being excreted along with urea. Then alkaptan urea, this is because of the elimination of an acid, because of the absence of particular gene, and that is why there is no formation of particular enzyme, there is no conversion process, there is no breakdown process. Then this, that alkaptan, one acid, homogenesic acid, that is being excreted along with urea. So the disease also called black urine disease. The urine turns black in color. Other disorders are the sacs disease affecting the brain and the cystic fibrosis, formation of uh, mucus, a viscous or viscid mucus and also affects particularly the pancreas, fibrous growth in the pancreas, that is why it's called cystic fibrosis. So these are all some of the disorders we will be studying more and more in detail when you are coming up to 12 standards. So uh, I would like to tell you only about the names of the disorders, a little thing you have to know. Only the interactive part. Then, defective dominant autosomal gene disorder. I given just one Huntington's chorea. It is a late acting dominant gene disorder. Late acting dominant gene disorder. So here it involves the twitching of the muscles. The muscles are actually contracting, relaxing without your cons without your consciousness. And that is what is called involuntary twitching of the voluntary muscles. Then general loss of the brain and the spinal cord. And uh, it was named after the name of the doctor, American doctor, American physician. So it is expressive only after the age of 35, that is why it's called late acting dominant gene disorder. Even some other conditions, for example, in some individuals we have the fusion of two digits, syndactyly. So that is what is called syndactyly, the union of two digits, polydactyly, the presence of an extra finger, the sixth finger. So all are also examples for defective dominant gene disorders. Now, the next one recessive is sex the gene disorders. And those genes, recessive genes found in the sex chromosomes, responsible for causing the disease, together constitute recessive sex the gene disorders. 
here we have a number so a few are given here hemophilia it's also called royal disease because it was first reported in Queen Victoria's family one of the princes while meeting an accident and here it's also called bladeless disease once getting an injury there is no clotting of blood the blood fails to clot there is a continuous loss of blood that is always called as hemophilia bladeless disease as it was reported first in Queen Victoria's family in Queen's family it is also called royal disease it was reported more and more volume royal family members the Queen's families and king, just King's families then color blindness some people are unable to differentiate the three main colors red, green and then blue such people are said to be color blind this is also because of the recessive gene present in one of the X chromosomes all our genes found in X chromosomes so I am using the word just actually recessive sex linked gene disorders here what I mentioned all those genes are located in just maybe the X chromosome hence called recessive X linked gene disorders common one sex link because they are found in the sex chromosomes and specifically found in the X chromosome that is why we can say this is X linked gene disorder color blindness unable to differentiate the green, blue and red accordingly we have just red green red color blindness green color blindness and also the blue color blindness this is because of the absence of certain pigments to perceive the three different colors then congenital nine blindness Night blindness unable to see the objects in dim light in twilight vision. So normally night blindness is caused because of the deficiency of vitamin E. If it is caused by a gene transmitted from the parents to the young one, then it's called congenital night blindness. So deficiency of vitamin E causes night blindness. Sometimes it may be caused because of a recessive gene in X chromosome. That is why it's called congenital. So when you are using the word congenital, that refers to transmittable from parents to animals then muscular dystrophy so actually we have this is simply called as BMD Dachini muscular dystrophy and also Becker's muscular dystrophy so there is actually the muscles are unable to work particular thigh muscle it may be of different types congenital muscular dystrophy or young muscular dystrophy or dominant etc so many things we have under this category and uh, such people are unable to walk after certain peak. So they need only the just at the beach. So such is the condition. Particularly it affects mostly the thigh muscles, the skeletal muscles, the person is unable to walk. So these are some of the genetic disorders may be caused by autosomal recessive gene or autosomal dominant gene or because of uh, that is sex linked genes. Now, what are the diseases due to chromosomal abnormal? I mentioned already it may be because of increased number of chromosomes or decreased number of chromosomes or maybe because of change in structure. Here I mentioned only change in number of chromosomes. Now the first one Down syndrome, these people have 47. Instead of actually 2 here, that is 46, they have one extra chromosome. As a result, they look like the Mongoloid people. It was named formerly Mongolism. Now it has been renamed as Down syndrome. So the flattened face, flattened nose, lower just actually lips. Then the mouth is always kept open. These are some of the symptoms of Down syndrome. Having one extra X chromosome, that is the result. That is adverse syndrome. This is also another disorder in such people. The head is very small. Here also, 2 years plus 1 condition. So this is 31 tries to be studying more about later. I don't know. Just go further into that one. So here also presence of extra one chromosome. The child's head is very small. That is, jaws are very small. And mentally the toy. Then the third one, the Patel syndrome. There you have cleft panel, the upper lip being divided. When the child is born, the upper lip is cleft. And that condition is called Patel syndrome. Now in the case of client fetusum, so in the first three, only addition of autosomes. One of the autosomal chromosomes being added. So that we have the symptoms, either in the case of Down syndrome or Edward syndrome or Pato syndrome. We have 44 autosomes plus you see that one, two sex chromosome. Here the addition is restricted to the autosomes. One chromosome is added, not this. But the next two, 
there is no addition to the autosomes, only the sex chromosomes are added. For example, in the case of Kleinfeld syndrome, normal male below the 144XY. This is normal. This is the disorder that occurs in the case of male. One more extra X chromosome is added. The person has now you see that one two X chromosomes and one Y chromosome. So altogether 47. And as a result, that individual, a male individual, develops female characters. Male individual develops female characters. Now let's take this Turner syndrome. So in the case of Turner syndrome, it is very common in the case of uh, in the case of female. There normally, you see, normal individuals have two X chromosomes. But in this case, Turner syndrome, one chromosome is less, only one X chromosome that individual. The second chromosome is last, so these individuals have 45. So here 44 autosomes, 2x chromosomes, 1y chromosome because of the addition of 1x chromosome, this individual develops, the male individual develops feminine characters. The second one because of the loss of 1x chromosome, this individual has 45. It is very common in the case of females. The female develops masculine characters. So for the syndrome, male with the female characters. Turner syndrome that is actually a kind where you have the female with male characters. So these are all some of uh, the genetical disorders related to the chromosomal abnormalities. Then other things just about uh, the third type. So so far we studied something about actually the organic disorders and also metabolic disorders or another one because of the genetic disorders. The third category we would like to just continue. The next class has one of time. So now the class has been completed. If you are interested to ask questions or post a question, we are ready to answer. Thank you.